On today's Big Blend Radio Show, we're heading to sunny Yuma, Arizona to hear all about the upcoming fall and winter events, festivals, and activities. Situated on the lower Colorado River and home to the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area, Yuma borders Mexico and is halfway between Tucson and San Diego. It's a historic cultural and outdoor adventure destination, and it also has a charming historic downtown district with murals, shops, restaurants, you name it. Now, this segment, we're going to start off with Lindsay Banaka. She is the Arts and Cultural Program Manager at the Yuma Art Center and Historic Yuma Theater in the downtown district. Then we're going to go out to the Yuma Civic Center, which is also connected to the Desert Sun Stadium. And we're going to chat with manager Esther Markle about all the upcoming events. And then we're going to hop over to the Desert Hills Golf Course right next to the Yuma Civic Center. And we're going to chat with golf course manager Drew Smith. Uh, everyone that we're chatting with today is all from the uh, Parks and Rec Department of the City of Yuma. And you can go to their website, yumaaz.gov. Let's get started. Located in the heart of historic downtown Yuma, Arizona, the Yuma Art Center and Historic Theater is host to a number of visual and performing arts events, all kinds of shows, and educational programs. And we're happy to have Arts and Culture Program Manager Lindsay Banaka back on Big Blend Radio today to give us an update on some of the special events and performances coming to the Yuma Art Center and Historic Yuma Theater this late fall and early winter, all the way through to February. And you can go to the website. It's yumaartcenter.com. Also, if you go to the city's website, go to yumaaz.gov. You can also see events through there as well. Welcome back, Lindsay. How are you? Hello. I'm well. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. I heard that there's a little expansion here and uh, going on with the theater. So I know that right now you've got, what, four art galleries within the Art Center? That's right. We've got four art galleries. We've got a lot of multi-purpose classrooms and art studio spaces and some different alternative spaces. And then we've got the 643-seat Historic Human Theater, which dates back to 1912. That's kind of our, our crown jewel of the Art Center. But then we're actually getting ready to open up a new 270 Black Box Theater, just another storefront down at 270 Main Street. So really excited about that new addition to our facility. Wow. So a black box theater, let's talk about that because that really means that it's, um, you can move it around, you can change what you're going to do inside there. Um, but as far as I remember them, it's like a, a black box theater. You're pretty like up close to the performer, aren't you? Yeah, it's a very raw space. Um, the black box is traditionally a storefront, but it can be kind of anything. It can be a basement theater, it can be all sorts of different things, but it's essentially just a room that's painted black and it's a total raw space that you can customize to anything and everything. So you can do a full theater production in there if you'd like, um, or you could do a cocktail party, you could do uh, open mic nights or improv nights or slam poetry readings, um, you name it, small concerts, all sorts of different event spaces um, or events can be used in the space, but it's all customizable. So there's no, no seats are in, uh, mm -hmm stapled to the floor, if you will. It, everything's <laughs> customizable. So we're putting in a technical grid in the ceiling. Um, but other than that, every we can point a light at any corner or any surface in the room. But yeah, you would be up and close and personal with um, the performers if it is a performance that's going on. Um, but it's a really interesting alternative event space that we're really excited to have in our, in our uh, list of facilities. I love this because it just seems like, you know, the arts are growing and growing and growing in Yuma as, and the whole region. Yeah. And it seems like the downtown is this hub, um, you know, where you can see shows, but also if you are a dance company, right, I could come to you and say, hey, can we come rent the theater out? I want to put on a show. Right. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And you can um, get married there, too. If you yeah, want. We host a lot of weddings. That's actually one of our favorite things to do. We actually put oh, a lot wow. of the, um, the wedding ceremonies on the stage, and then we do a reception in our gallery space afterwards. But we, we can customize any of our spaces to anyone's event needs. But um, just like you said, the arts are exploding right now in our community, and we wouldn't be able to open up another um, addition to our facility without that need. And our um, theater is booked almost a year in advance right now, and we double book and triple book ourselves and um, put multiple events in a single day because we're crazy um, and we're really <laughs> excited to have this additional space so we can ease some of our existing compression in our calendar and facility and kind of provide a, a new space that maybe you want to put on a performance or you have an idea for an event but you know you're not going to fill 643 seats 
in the theater and that might just be a little bit daunting or too big of a space for your needs. Um, mm. We now have the alternative space that has a lower, more intimate seating, um, but can still offer a really, really great venue for whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do. The restaurants must love you downtown. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of really great partnerships with um, our, just our neighbors are incredible on Main Street just across the board, but we've got really good relationship with the brewery. We've got Lutz Casino right across the street that they're really kind to us. Every one of the little shops um, is really supportive of the arts and um, we're obviously, whatever is good for them is good for us and vice versa. So mm. Main Street is definitely busy. It's a place to be, but there's still parking and it's still free. So I always... I, I come from That's a, a big um, deal. Chicago and yeah. free parking is unheard of. So you can, if the show starts at seven, you can pull up at 645, find a seat and or find a parking spot and still get to your seat on time and be able to find a seat at um, one of the many restaurants downtown afterwards. So it still has a small town charm, but um, lots of big city amenities that we're really excited to have. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you know, what I love is that it just has this energy to the downtown district people are like busy you take a walk and it's like go in the shop oh let's go take in a show you know and it's like oh let's go have a beer you know and one of the other additions that I love is I'm seeing that and actually I watched you guys do this ceremony the uh you know the uh ribbon ceremony of uh the new mural right outside the oh, arts yeah. and I was like yeah this is so cool because the last time we went through Huma I'm like I don't remember all these murals being here and it seems like yeah. it's getting decorated. It's colorful, man. <laughs> yeah, our public art scene is also exploding. Just the arts and culture industry in Yuma is just, uh, it's thriving right now and we can't keep up with the demand and the need, which is a good problem for us to have. But uh, we partnered with um, NextGen, which is the Young Professionals uh, nonprofit here in town. Um, and we partnered with them on some different projects, but uh, we went out for some funding from the Arizona community foundation of Yuma um, to do a, a community beautification project that's called Mural a Month and our goal is mm. to put up a work of public art uh, somewhere in the community and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the downtown district but it's convenient and it's definitely high traffic um, so we did just put up a mural on a utility box that used to be mm. an eyesore and now it's kind of a selfie station but it's a greetings from sunny Yuma Arizona kind of vintage postcard with a contemporary flair to it, if you will. So we just have like that it. really cool mural that it's it's a selfie station. It's definitely puts Yuma on the map a little bit more. So if you're strolling down Main Street, you've got tons to look at. That's just one of the many works of art on Main Street right now. Um, and then this later this afternoon, we're unveiling um, a few, we're unveiling three new sculptures and our, our art walk on Main Street as well. So the public art scene, the arts and culture scene, the visual arts, performing arts, we're alive right now. I'm super excited because, you know, Yuma's our headquarters for our Love Your Parks tour. And oh, yeah. um, so we're going to be back and forth all the time. So every time we come, I'm like, yay, I can go see another mural and another show, you know. Uh, so super excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're moving back. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna oh, be that's awesome cool. to hear. It's a Yuma's yeah. such a really special place that it, it we we have over 100,000 people um, who are permanent residents, but we still have that really small town flair. Our mm -hmm. main street is three blocks long. Everyone knows each other. Um, so we've definitely got the charming uh, small town vibe, but we've got a lot of um, big city amenities and our cost of living is still pretty affordable. So it's, yeah. we're, we love Yuma. And you can walk down to the river. I mean, it's just so, oh, yeah. it, it's just it, over the years, I mean, we've been covering Yuma for over 20 years and just to see the growth and, and uh, watch the heritage area become the heritage area and mm -hmm. see the downtown go through so many changes to get to this point. Um, and the arts really, I mean, it's truly grown. I mean, it, it just even the, I want to say the quality has changed. Um, it's got, it seems to be very open for all ages, you know, and, and yep. you know, I love also the education component. I think that's one of the most amazing things too, is not only putting on shows, um, but really you are also educating, which is part of the role of creating an art hub, isn't it? Absolutely. We're, we like to think we're a full service kitchen sink art center. So we do have the education spaces that we have classes for, um, we have toddler art classes and dance classes, and then we've got senior painting and everything in between. So we do have classes our age range, but then we also have open age classes. So we have a family pottery class where you can take a class together as a family. So there's a lot of different options that we have to offer, but education is a huge part of it. Um, but maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily directly to education, but our mission is to provide arts and culture opportunities to our community. And that can be passive as 
walking by a sculpture or walking through our galleries and passively taking in the arts, or it can be that active participation, which is getting people's hands dirty and getting them holding a paintbrush or holding a piece of clay or getting them holding a script on stage. So we like to do a little bit of both, making sure that everyone in our community has access um, to the arts and an opportunity to participate in that, whatever that means to them. Mm, and you've got a kiln. That's a big deal. <laughs> we have, have a kiln. several kilns. Yeah, no, we <laughs> pottery is, uh, we're in the desert southwest, which is definitely a hub uh, across the region for pottery. Um, but we've got some really, really skilled um, master potters and ceramicists um, that we're really proud to have in our facility who use our facility essentially as studio space and teach their practices. So we've got a really vibrant Raku pottery scene, um, but mm. everything under the sun when it comes to sculptural stuff, or if it's um, more functional wares. We've got a really, really rich uh, pottery scene as well in our community. You know, one of the things I know when, um, you know, our tour has been like, you know, Nancy and I travel full time, going to every single national park unit, every park that we can possibly document we do, and, and the arts is a huge part of it. And one of the things that, um, you know, as we were going back and forth on our first phase of the tour, um, we were headquartered at um, the Carnado Motor Hotel. And you know, all of a sudden we were going to all these shows and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have like a concert or a performance, like almost, I mean, I'm going to say daily, right? Because I, yeah. even looking at the schedule now, um, you know, mm -hmm. through November, through December, January into February, you have like concerts, you have like the Blue Christmas concert, like, you know, mm -hmm. Elvis Presley style. And then you've got like Neil Diamond tribute concerts. It seems like you have like every genre of music is in yeah, here. Yeah, we, we work with, I think we're up to six series promoters who they're um, regional producers who present uh, original works and or original acts or um, tribute bands. So we do have shows, Our I kind of our average is four nights a week, but it can be up to seven nights a week, but then we have to throw in a day off for tech rehearsals or um, changing out lights or whatnot in between there. So we're not able to do them every single day, although some weeks we were a bit ambitious, but we do have something at least three or four times a week now through May of next year. So whatever your musical um, preferred mm -hmm. genre is, we have something for you. Like you said, Neil Diamond's coming in. We've got really good Johnny Cash um, tribute concert that comes back every year that we love. Cool. But we've got the Blues Brothers are coming back again. Yay. The Glenn Campbell story. Um, the Manhattan Dolls are um, an original uh, act out of the Phoenix area, and they do kind of that um, rockabilly style musical nice. act. And we love having them. They haven't done a concert in the theater before. Um, that's They're the headliners for, so we're really excited to have them um, come and do a performance, but you name it, we've got it. Um, we also partner with our local nonprofits, so we've got a really, really wonderful orchestra association that does a concert with us um, called Spirit of Christmas, that's in our space, and then we do a Valentine's Day show with them called Romantic Classics, um, so if you like instrumental orchestra, we, we bring them into and partner with them. We've got the Nutcracker with the local um, Arizona Classical Ballet that they put on, so we've got kind of everything under the sun when it comes to performing arts. Wow, and then also Thursdays at the theater, you've got the film side oh, of yeah. it too, yeah. which is so really cool. That's also one of our um, kind of uh, an event that we're really proud of that we've been going, that's been going on for over 10 years. So before the art center was actually built and we just had the theater, because um, the theater dates back to 1912. But for over a decade, we've been partnering with Arizona Western College, which is our local community college on, and their film class. We're in their uh, media department that we host their film class, which is uh, every... I think it's every first Thursday. Sometimes it changes depending on the student schedule. We host their film class and it's open to the public. So you have students who've got their textbooks there too. Um, and, mm. But the public can come out and get a lecture from the uh, the theater pro or the film professor and learn about the films and the film industry and um, some different wow. techniques. And then we watch films and they're all foreign films um, that we wouldn't otherwise screen yeah. in our in our region let alone in Yuma so that's a monthly film series that's been going on for like I said over a decade that it's really special and it, they get some really good films so come Oscar season I'm always amazed I'm like whoa we we had that in our in our Check theater us last, out, last man. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's yeah. a really fun one and something we're also really proud of is all of our tickets are extremely affordable so ticket mm -hmm. prices to Thursdays at the theater is five dollars for general admission or 250 if you're a student so that you is you yeah, can't you do can. anything for five dollars anymore. So our we we try to keep our um, tickets as affordable as possible. Some of our uh, bigger touring acts maybe will go up to about thirty thirty five dollars for a ticket price, but that's 
that's the absolute max we'll have in our space. So the average mm -hmm. ticket price can be about 15 to $20, but for the live music that we bring in and for the regional acts that we bring in, we're, we're really excited to, to offer those affordable prices. And the other thing too is, um, you know, talk about art itself, the, the, you know, visual arts as well. And I know you, you know, people can go and look at all the different shows and the different exhibits. And mm -hmm. you also have the artist co-op there, the, the North End Artist Co-op. And That's right. uh, there's a, a juried show coming up I want to touch on. But first, uh, the North End Art Walk. I mean, this is, again, one of those um, just really iconic events of Yuma. I, I think how that's been going like 10, 20 years, I feel uh, like. It's possible. I don't even know that I could quote you the, the year, but at least a decade that event's been yeah. going on. And it's um, essentially like it, calling it a sidewalk sale is not doing it any justice, but it's um, artists take over the sidewalk on Main Street and all over historic downtown. Um, and it's will get anywhere upwards of 100, 150 artists and really makers of all shapes and sizes who are presenting their work. So you'll have people that do regional um, fairs with huge setups and then you'll have someone that only maybe is, has three works, three paintings that they've made but they wanna put them on display and for sale. So everything under the sun is primarily local artists um, mm -hmm. and, and makers. So I think you can find anyone that makes something. So it's not necessarily just fine art. I always, there's a birdhouse booth that I get a custom birdhouse from every year just because they're so adorable. Cool. Um, and they support our local parks department. So obviously I'm in, um, yeah. but any, anything under the sun when it comes to arts and crafts and makers, our wood carvers come out who are incredible fine artisans of themselves. But Northern Art Walk is definitely one of our favorite events. And that's um, November, make sure I say the right date, November 16th. It's always a Friday night, kind of in the middle of November, but we partner with downtown merchant sport too. So sometimes the artists are inside the space nice so and can, then go ahead oh yeah so the the goal is that you're supporting the arts but you're supporting our downtown merchants as well so we give out an mm -hmm. award for the favorite downtown merchant which is kind of a bragging rights trophy and then they get advertising at the art center for a year so it's a big one for businesses as well as it is for the artists so it's a win-win for all of us the other thing too is the arts in the park um that is oh yeah um, Art in the Park, January 19th, everyone. I mean, this, because it goes, it's out in, it was it in the Gateway Park, uh, right think, there by the Ocean to Ocean Bridge yeah, with the Colorado right. River as your backdrop. Can can I bring wine? <laughs> I just uh, you wine. can't bring it, but we'll have it available for purchase. So we hold the liquor license oh. and we, we like to do mimosas and Bloody Marys and you're welcome to stroll along the river and, and take in um, a libation along the river. But we kind of have modeled Art in the Park after the Surat painting, the, um, the Sunday in the park, Sunday in the park on the Grand oh, Chate, yeah. the that that kind of iconic stipple, um, that dot painting, if you will. So it's a really nice leisure day, meandering along the Colorado River to stroll, take in take in the the beautiful park. Gateway Park is one of our um, kind of mm. one of our poster parks for the city because it's so beautiful, right under that ocean to ocean bridge. Um, and then we get upwards of a hundred artists um, who are sharing their their wares. And then we have a great bar that's open. And then we have a kids zone too, of course, for the for families to come out. We bring out lawn games. Um, so you can play giant checkers and giant um, connect four, but it's one of our favorite events of, of the year. And January in Yuma is gorgeous. So it's always a lovely day in the park, full of art, full of wine, full of games. It's, a, it's one of our favorite events too. Awesome. This is exciting. Um, the other part too um, is that going back to the you know the downtown area. The holiday season is coming up. Um, I know that you have the holiday art bazaar happening December eighth, everyone. And mm -hmm. so this is in the art center. So this is you, see this is what I love because to me it this is important to go in and get handcrafted items. You know for the holidays whether it's you know something art jewelry something as a gift that is you know from the arts it's it's cool <laughs> i want to do yeah, that i don't want to have like, the typical thing everyone else has that's you know? right so if you have someone on your list that has everything already or you have no idea what to get them we have something for them because it's all about giving the gift of handmade giving the gift of shopping local um, we like to say deck the walls not the halls so by painting <laughs> by a, by a custom work of art to not only just keep our local economy um, flourishing but to also just um, support someone that's hand making something in a day and age where it's super easy to just go online and have it shipped to your door or to go to a big box store. Um, we're, we're really encouraging people to get out of that comfort zone and, and really see what's going on in the community because we've got some really amazing artisans in the area who are making really cool stuff 
and it's really affordable too. That's something that I've, I've lived in a lot of bigger areas um, where the arts are often seen as something for someone else, or there's no way my wallet could even touch anything in this space, but we've got stuff starting at $2.50 for different ornaments, all the way up the price range too. So if you're, if you're looking for fine high scale art, we've got that too. But if you're looking for something more casual or something more budget conscious, we've got that too. But we really encourage people to shop local and give the gift of handmade art. And you start this all really getting into the season, isn't it right after Thanksgiving the next day? That's right. So oh, we Saturday. are close. We're close Thanksgiving Day and the day after, um, but the Saturday uh, after Thanksgiving is Small Business Saturday, and we're really um, we push a lot for that day because we're obviously located in downtown Main Street, so we really want to encourage people to get out and about and support local businesses. Um, so we do some different sales in our gift shop. We've got a great make and take project in the galleries happening. Or, yeah, in mm -hmm. the galleries that day. So we've got some different family friendly activities and we're opening up the sunniest place on our juried show that day so we've got all new artwork on display in the galleries everything is available for sale at that time so we're, we really encourage people to come in and then also to kick off our ho holiday season I'm announcing it just right now is that we're screening um, the won't you be my neighbor new Mr. Rogers documentary awesome. um, to really just get people in the not necessarily the holiday spirit but in the the mindset of being kind to one another and give building that spirit of giving back and taking care of your neighbor. So we're really excited to, to screen that movie um, right after Thanksgiving. It'll be seven o'clock on November 24th. So that's, we're really kind of just spearheading our feel good season, if you will, to, to give back and take care of one another in a day and age where um, it's, there's a lot of scary crazy. stuff happening in the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's of, not that there's crazy. ever not, but we yeah. really want to just kick off the holiday season with some, some feel good and some tender love and care. So um, that's why we're bringing the movie to the theater. We've got plenty of make and take stuff in the galleries. Um, the gallery activities are all free. The screening of Won't You Be My Neighbor will be $5 general admission. But then we also give, we're giving away um, free tickets to child care providers and teachers because that's what Mr. Rogers was all about. So that's we're really awesome. excited to have that event coming, coming our way. And lastly, um, I wanted to touch base on this. In February, I hear some dinner theater production is coming. Uh, yes. to, to you. It's actually a locally uh, performed one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so we produce this show. It's one of the only um, theater productions that we produce in-house ourselves. Um, and we hire a director through our theater fellowship program to provide an opportunity for a local director to direct a show. Um, we are in casting for it right now, and additions will kick off pretty soon. Or uh, rehearsals mm -hmm. will kick off pretty soon for for the show, um, but it's every Valentine's Day week, um, February 13th through 17th, we take over the galleries and build a custom stage. We put out um, about 15 uh, eight-foot tables, um, and we do an entire dinner theater production. So we build a custom stage for it. It's always really, really exciting. We pull out all the stops. Um, we drop things from the ceiling. We, we hang things on the walls that we wouldn't normally do, um, but we transform our galleries into a full theater house. Um, and we cater cater the dinner from our Yuma Civic Center, which is our uh, partner in Parks and Recreation. So we keep everything in-house and under one roof, and it's always a ton of fun. Tickets are already on sale, and we're about 50% sold out right now, and uh, uh, rehearsals wow. haven't even started. So this event historically sells out months and months in advance because it's always, it's always a great production, and it's always a lot of fun. So we really encourage them. Um, this to be a great date night, or if you've got um, uh, some coworkers that you'd like to take out for the evening or to give back, uh, we are always encouraging people to to bring bring your bring your family, bring your bring your posse, bring your coworkers out for dinner theater. And it's always the week of Valentine's Day again, and the the price of the tickets thirty five dollars, and it includes a th three course meal. Wow. And the show. So again, it's really affordable. The food is always amazing, um, and then we'll have a bar available for um, purchasing of. of Special like specialty drink. Libation. Yeah, yeah everybody needs a little libation. Yeah. And we always <laughs> theme everything to it. So the production this year is called Almost Maine, and it's a series of love stories and people falling in and out of love and how the, kind of the trials and tribulations of relationships, which is perfect for Valentine's Day. Um, but being, it's about a town called Almost Maine. So if you think about Maine and mm. New England, um, the food is baked chicken. We've got lobster mac and uh, lobster mac and cheese is one of the side dishes. Ooh. We're going to have lots of really great specialty cocktails that pair with the event nicely. So although we don't have to deal with the winter that Maine might have, we're going to definitely theme the event after that. So nice. it'll be a ton of fun. But that's one of our favorite events as well. 
so much happening, Lindsay. It's exciting. Yeah. Everyone, again, uh, go to YumaArtCenter.com and also YumaAZ.gov uh, for events as well. And uh, you can also uh, keep up with us on NationalParkTraveling.com and keep up with all Yuma events as well. Uh, we want to thank the historic Coronado Motor Hotel in Yuma, Arizona. In the downtown, you can walk from the hotel to the Art Center and you can walk to Art in the Park. You can walk there and uh, enjoy your dinner and, uh, and a show or one of the amazing art events or concerts. So uh, everybody go to CoronadoMotorHotel.com. Thanks for sponsoring Yvonne and John Peach for sponsoring our Yuma segments. And uh, don't forget, keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Thanks so much for joining us again, Lindsay. Real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Located in Yuma, Arizona, adjacent to the Desert Hills Golf Course and Ray Kroc Sports Complex, also Desert Sun Stadium, the Yuma Civic Center is Yuma's favorite event space and hosts to a number of annual community events. I mean, all kinds of events from, uh, you, sometimes you'll see hot air balloons there, it could be a car show, it could be a German festival. There's all kinds of things happening out there, and I'm happy to have Yuma Civic Center Manager Esther Markle here on Big Blend Radio with us today to provide a little overview of the Civic Center's facilities and event space, and also to talk about some of the upcoming fall, winter, and holiday events being held uh, this year and in through January 2019. Uh, you can go to the website, yumaciviccenter.com, and also to keep up with events uh, for Yuma, you can go to yumaaz.gov. Welcome back, Esther. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Awesome. Awesome. I love to hear that. And you're in sunny Yuma, Arizona, so it's got to be good, you know. This is that, it's that busy time of year. It's already started for you guys, hasn't it? Oh, it sure has. The weather's changing. It's beautiful. Mm hmm Nice, nice. You know, uh, the Yuma Civic Center, you know, I've, I've been going there for years, and to me, uh, you know Nancy and I in our travels, <laughs> you know, we're always looking at different yeah. places, and, um, you know, to me, this is one of those unique venues if someone's going to have like a wedding or put on some kind of expo or festival, um, you know, it just really is unique in that you have rooms that can change, you can change the size of them, um, I know that there's, uh, op you know, opportunity, like you have kitchens in there and things, but also free parking. I didn't realize how important that is, but free parking is a big deal when you're putting on a big event. It really is. Um, you know, to think about it, I mean, we can house uh, about 2,000 people in the parking lot. So, um, you know, and it's co it's convenient. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very close to the venue, and so you don't have to park way over there and walk uh, half a mile to get into the venue. Mm, and what it, it's wasn't it forty three thousand square feet of flexible event space for the whole complex? Yes, including wow. the Desert Sun Stadium. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow! So you've got a sports complex, a Desert Sun Stadium, and then having the Desert Hills Golf Course next to you—that's that creates like a really beautiful location to have weddings too. As, a, as that, with that as the backdrop. Oh, yes. And, you know, when you mentioned Desert Hills Golf Course, when you're out the back um, of the property here, our, we have a, um, a patio or a terrace, and that venue seats 600 people, and it overlooks the golf course, the lake on the golf course, uh, the flat or the lighting. Uh, we have brand new landscaping out there. It's just a gorgeous venue out back. Mm, nice. It's so pretty. And there's birds out there, too. Like, I've seen birds out there. It's cool. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> you, roadrunners, too. Roadrunners, I've seen burrowing owls out in the parking lot, actually, too. And uh, curlews and, and, like, ibis. Ibis birdie is walking on the course, which is neat. So, it's, you know, it's nice to have nature and shade, which you have, and, uh, you know, have that indoor and outdoor venue. I think that's really neat for, for folks who are planning that. And you do a lot of quinceaneras, too, not just weddings and, and expos and all these different events. Um, but quinceaneras, that's, that's one of the you know, main functions that happen over there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we host them um, as small as 75 people all the way up to 750 people. So, uh, but yes, that is in the winter, almost every weekend, I think uh, we're doing a quinceanera or a wedding. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Wow. And um, yeah, I want to touch on some of the events coming up this year because some are new and so oh, going into New Year's as well. Um, but let's start with it's a Christmas ball. This is an event that's happening on November 30th. And so this is it, basically a, a festival for Christmas, right? Yes, it is. It's a semi-formal event and it is inside the Yuma Civic Center's uh, biggest room, which uh, we're going to seat for about 750 people. And um, currently, you can get tickets um, on Yuma Show tickets, but just to tell you about it, when you come onto the property, you're going to get your picture taken right away. And you remember the days, Lisa, when you would go mm -hmm. out and Santa would give you the Polaroid. And well, we're not going to give you a Polaroid, but we're going to give you a four by six picture and you're going to um, get to have it in the frame and you're going to go into the Civic Center. And then all the fun begins. Nice, nice. And decorations and food. You got to have food, right? <laughs> That's the thing. We, we want do. food. Oh my Christmas goodness. cookies. <laughs> oh. You know, our chef, we um, thought out of the box, but of course, you know, the the, the uh, food is a buffet setup, and it does include uh, your main entrees, vegetarian dishes, dessert, and um, coffee, iced tea, and water come with it. And for those that uh, like to enjoy a drink from time to time, we'll have our bar set up, but we have a band that we'll be playing and a photo booth inside the Yuma room. So if you bring your group of eight and take a whole table, you can go over there and make lots of memories. It's going to be a good event. And Santa, he'll be there. Awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, the, the other thing too, you're talking about food and, and festivities and a couple of the events to me are really cool. You go global and these are, I, I know we got to touch on the men's expo too, and also the local bandito obstacle run. Um, but I wanted to touch on this with the food and the festivities. Um, January 19th, you're having the Yuma German Fest. Now I remember there being one, I think it was on Main Street. Is this the same event, but moved into the uh, Civic Center? What's What's happening with this one? It absolutely is. Um, so um, Barb and Bill moved on with their lives and closed down their German restaurant. And oh. so Debbie went with the city, said, you know, listen, let's tackle the German festival. And it fits for our Desert Sun Stadium because, you know, on the ground over there, we can house over 4,000 people. So um, we nice. took on the event and we are contracting some different bands to come in and uh, it's going to be everything, all about German food, German food, German games, um, nice. dancers are coming in, just like they did, just on a larger scale. Nice, nice, and that's such a cool venue. That's where you have your uh, Tunes and Tacos Festival. I love that one, you know, have the music and the food, you know, that, and we enjoy the tequila tasting, you know how, how we are. <laughs> 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 you know, so I'm just getting that out there for everyone. April, that comes up. It's such a fun event. And uh, I remember our, our travel writer friends going and judging the tacos and uh, not knowing some of the things going, I don't know what that is. It tastes good. And then like, oh, did I eat? I eat like a cow's tongue or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's good tacos in there, people. I'm just saying, but they, you know, they were like, "What's that one?" You know, um, they had a, they had a ball, they, and they had some really good tacos. So it was, it was difficult judging. I think it always is. Uh, but you've got the the German Fest again, January 19th, everyone, 2019. Can you believe it's happening, 2019, Esther? <laughs> It's like, woo. I know. What happened with all the time? I mean, you're I having parties at, at the, sun, the Desert Sun Stadium and at the U.S. Oh, Pacific Center. So it just time flies by. It, it does. And, you know, um, but with, you know, time comes more events and more exploration. So we're just having a really good time at creating events for people to come to. Awesome. And uh, here's another one that I want to go. And I know this started, I think, a couple of years ago. I remember Carrie talking about it on a show with us. Uh, January 25th is the Scottish Burns Supper. Now, that's, you know, I love men in kilts. <laughs> Just saying. So I hope there's a lot. I hope to see a lot there. <laughs> well, Lisa, if you know how to dance that uh, specific dance that they do, I'm looking for a dancer. We only have one. So if you want to come in and you can learn how to, I think it's called a killed dance or. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Gosh, the real, the Highland uh, reel. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. The Highland reels. And so if you know how to do that, make sure you and your mom are here and you can help us out because we need Well, I, I don't know how to do that, but I've been to <laughs> many, many San Diego Scottish Games events and watched and filmed and, and watched these amazing dancers. And it's really fascinating because. Um, a lot of the Highland dance, you know, they're typically girls. There's there's gentlemen doing it as well. But what's so fascinating is a lot of them, like there's the 
the um, how I'm going to say the sailor's horn. Uh, there's all these different types, and it's all um, about dancing over swords. Um, it's all actually how they used to. Uh, it's all part of the military tactics. Uh, from when they were in battles and uh, you know when that's part of how we got the caber and then they would do caber toss and stuff but it would it was all these dances had to do with um, being prepared for battle and footwork it's fascinating it, all the stories are amazing about behind all these dances so um, that's cool that you're going to have them and and I hear you're going to have good music too we are so of course you know we bring in uh, the firemen are very much connected to this event here so we like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen, the firemen, right? Yeah. Yay, yay. <laughs> but, well, they're bringing in the band, and um, they also head up pretty much this entire event for us. They they really work with us really well, and they order a special haggis, and of course, our chef makes a haggis as well, but um, wow. the firemen are just right up at the front, and you know, then the reading of the poems, and um, I'm really looking forward to this year. I don't know um, yet exactly how we're going to make it better because last year seemed to please everyone but um we do have a couple ideas um hmm. we're mulling around but um they can look forward to the same menu they had last year we're not going to change the food and and of course you know we want to stick with the tradition of um the haggis being the main item but uh the dancing and the music and the reading of the poems it seems like it's a real special occasion mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So, uh, and that's the part of it. Uh, this a uh, typical Scottish Burns supper, uh, reading the the poems of Robert Burns, and um, I mean, he's just you know he's the iconic Scottish poet. So uh, it's just wonderful. I mean, what a wonderful event, and just shows all the different kinds of festivities you can have. Um, the one, uh, the Yuma Men's Expo. Tell me about this. Um, so this is is dedicated to men, right? And this is January fifth, everybody. It is dedicated to young men, fathers, and grandfathers. And just to give you a quick snapshot, so what we what we wanted to do here, the the goal was to bring in different types of organizations throughout Yuma that would be something that's going to touch a young man meeting a high school seniorish age through a father, through a grandfather, the life, you know, the things that are going to touch their life all the way from education, opportunities, skilled trades, um, um, mm. sports, uh, groups, financial, uh, physical fitness, um, um, my goodness, we're going to have a basketball shooting contest. We're going to have a barber contest. And thirdly, we're going to have um, the Caballeros here, and they're going to set up their strongman competition, not to compete, but to let uh, spectators take a look at the actual strongman competition now being held in Yuma by the Caballeros so that people can sign up to mm. participate um, at this men's expo. But, um, and so, so, so the whole thing is geared towards entertainment, uh, or livelihood, education, things that are going to happen and ways to fix it. So we're going to have demonstrations from Home Depot. Best Buy is actually going to set up an area with a competitive game that you'll be able to go in in your time to get maybe five minutes to participate in this game that Best Buy is going to hook up um, on a big old screen. That ought to be fun. And, wow. And, um, yeah, so... We'll have a couple of food vendors outside, but uh, we actually have a, a cigar and a hookah lounge coming to set up outside. So wow. if you want to, yeah, if you want to go out back, you know, and you feel like taking a break from the event, and you, you know, you're not done looking, you can go out back and pick yourself out a cigar and sit down and chill out for a little bit. And um, but it's going to wow. be pretty interesting. Yeah, this is completely different. I, I love it. And the other event, that, I think this event, December 1st, the Loco Bandito Obstacle Run, that gets everyone prepared for the Human Men's <laughs> Expo. This one, yeah. I, you know what, I think this is for, for you know men and women too. Uh, this sounds like so yeah. much fun. It sounds like we can get in the mud. Um, it sounds like we're going to play Survivor. <laughs> Well, you are, and here's the thing about it. Um, I went to Payson um, a short time in the summer uh, for our weekend just to watch something mm -hmm. happening, and I said, listen, we need to bring mud, water, and obstacles, and a run all entailed. So that was the birthing of a local bandito obstacle run, and so it is December 1st. In the morning, we do the kids, meaning ages up to 13, and then the adults 
the feats for the adult will start within 30 minutes after the kids are done and that's 14 and up and so what that looks like is the kids will have obstacles and mud uh, challenges and water challenges all encompassed on the Yuma Civic Center's land but then the adults will start on the land of the Yuma Civic Center and then they'll head up onto Avenue A um, over here there's a border patrol and across the street from the border patrol is what we call the city owns a property jackrabbit trail all sand with little small tiny hills and little tiny hills all tucked in there it's a rather large landscape area and it's um, just desert and so what's going to happen over there is that's where our mud obstacles will be our water obstacles will be over there are dragging the tires and filling their own sand bus buckets to carry from point A to point B and yeah so um, nice. it's going to be pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fun. I want to go watch that. <laughs> I want to watch that. Yes. Well, you know the good, thing, well, the good <laughs> thing about this event um, is it involves the community, and we want the community to come out. Some people like running. Some people like getting dirty. Some people want the challenge of getting in and out of a water obstacle and then heading in the mud and and then, you know, just making the whole, it's the, it's the adrenaline of, you know, I get to do all these crazy things and then get, you know, I'm timed. And so I end up, I, maybe if I'm first place, I get an, I get a, um, you know, a medallion. But the cool thing about this is we're inviting a lot of people to come volunteer, helping us man this event, helping us set it up and tear it down. And if they do, then they get to have a 10 by 10 tent inside our Desert Sun Stadium, and they can talk about their business. So, oh, nice. yeah, just to help us, we help them, everything works out. Very nice. These events sound like so much fun, and I love it because I love that community connection. I think that's what always makes things special. And and if you're a visitor uh, going to Yuma, uh, it's always meet you know to meet the community. That's part of travel. That's a part about getting into a destination is to connect with the local community. And uh, I think these events sound like a blast. Quite frankly, <laughs> I want to go to all of them. Uh, everyone, again, the website is yumaciviccenter.com, and also if you go to the city of Yuma's website. Uh, you'll see all the different events, especially if you go to the Parks and Recreation Department. They also have um, a booklet that you can download. You can get them all through Yuma as well. Um, you can see them online uh, that has all the different events and recreation opportunities and classes. I know like the Arts Center has classes, all these different things. Uh, so go to yumaaz.gov for that. And uh, before you go, I want to say thank you to our sponsor today for today's show is the historic Coronado Motor Hotel in Yuma, Arizona. It's in the downtown area. Uh, it has been in Yuma for over 80 years this year, which is amazing. So uh, you can learn more. Go to CoronadoMotorHotel.com. And I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us here on Big Blend Radio. You can keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Thanks so much for joining us, Esther. Such a pleasure to have you back on the show. Thank you, Lisa. And I look forward to your next visit over to our sunny city. We can't wait. We can't wait. And we'll see you soon on our Love Your Park store. And uh, we're, let's get in the mud, okay? Esther, you're going to do it? Would you get in the oh mud? Oh, my God. If you come, come out here for that event, I'll go through it with you. But if you don't come in, I, I don't think I'm going. <laughs> we'll be there. Game on. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Thanks so much, Esther. <laughs> you're welcome. Bye-bye, Lisa. Located in sunny Yuma, Arizona, adjacent to the Yuma Civic Center and the Desert Sun Stadium, the Desert Hills Golf Course is an award-winning 18-hole par 72 champion course, and it features 6,800 yards of challenging topography, scenic views, and also the popular patio restaurant and bar. Great place for cocktails at sunset, just saying. <laughs> We're happy to have golf course manager Drew Smith back on Big Blend Radio today, and he's going to give us an overview of Desert Hills and also share some of the upcoming events, uh, special events like uh, golf clinics, uh, foot golf tournaments, and uh, apparently birdies and beer Christmas cheer uh, events. So it sounds like a lot of fun's happening over there. You can go to the website, go to cityofyumagolf.com. Welcome back, Drew. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Lisa. Hope you're well. You were doing good, doing good. Um, looking at all these events going on, uh, this birdies and beer Christmas cheer sounds like a, a way to get around the golf course. It's a good way to, if you've never been there, right? That's a good <laughs> way to find out about it. That is exactly right. Yeah. So what is this? You're going to have samples as you, as you tee off? 
Right. We, it's a scramble event or a captain's choice event. Uh, we're going to tee off that afternoon at one o'clock and th stationed throughout the golf course will be various uh, craft brewery representatives who have samples of several kinds of their beer. And so you finish a hole or you're at a tee box and getting ready to tee off and somebody's there and you go over and grab a sample and say, hmm, I really like this or ooh, that's not my favorite flavor. So I'll try this one. And then we're going to keep people moving and excited to play. Uh, we're going to feed everybody before we go out to play. <laughs> good, uh, good to, idea. Just to make, just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, we want golf's one of those sports where you can, unlike tennis, you can have a beer while you're playing. It's hard to chase down a tennis ball while you're holding a beer. That's but, right, and you don't want golf, to spill. <laughs> that's right. In golf, you can just put your beer down, go hit your tee shot, and come back and pick your beer back up. Yeah, and you're walking the course too, so that's good. That's you're right. getting some exercise. It's is a good way to get, you know, yeah, exercise and cheer at the same time and get to know the course. And, um, you know, and I hope someone's filming this. <laughs> it would it would take me a lot of beer and a lot of time to finish a course, I think. But, um, you know, because I'm still at the novice, very, very much a novice at this. And that's what I love about uh, what you're doing over at Desert Hills is that you have tournaments even for families and not just tournaments, but golf clinics and uh, teach people of all ages. Right. That's right. We we start teaching kids as, as young as three years old, and it, there's never wow. there's never too late to learn how to play golf. So we we teach seniors that have never held a golf club before in their 70s and 80s. Uh, our first family golf clinic is going to be November 4th, mm -hmm. and there we teach the basics of golf. That's for somebody who's never really had an exposure to golf. So it's a family friendly introduction to golf. The fundamentals of the grip, holding the club, the stance, and how to position yourself, and also posture. We'll go through the swing basics and just get people a, a firm foundation. And then if they want to go from there into some of our other clinics or some private lessons, they can do that. But we we intend it to be non-threatening, non-intimidating, and just very friendly. Say, this is a golf club. Here's how you use it. And hopefully people take off with that. So that would be one that I would attend this kind. <laughs> this is a golf club because that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm at yep. like getting to know that and then, you know, how to not, you know, do the flamingo legs that I did last time uh, learning how to play golf. But I did eventually hit the ball and it went go. pretty far. So it was and it was exciting. I was like, wow, look at that. Uh, so the, your family golf clinics, November 4th, and then you have one December 9th as well. We do. That one is focused on the short game or pitching and chipping. And that focuses on the fundamentals of pitching the ball from uh, maybe 20, 30 yards off the green, chipping the ball when you're up close to it, and also putting the ball. Putting's about half the game. About half your shots are putt. So if you become a good putter, it makes the game a lot more enjoyable and a lot easier. And mm -hmm. if you don't putt well, it's really frustrating. I know people that have found out that their putters couldn't float or swim. Well, then they need a beer. <laughs> there you go. And there you go. They send them to the birdies and beer <laughs> event too. Yeah, and you know I like this because families get together, and I think it's a nice activity for everyone. Like, here's what we can do as a family, especially around the holiday season. Everybody gets so stressed out. I'm like, no, just go outside. The weather is beautiful in December and in uh, in January. I mean, in in Yuma, it's sunny. Everyone, there's no snow to deal with. Um, but you also have in February uh, family golf play the par three course day. That so what happens with that? Because it's another great family event. It is, and we in February we take everybody over to the par three course, mm -hmm. and we play nine holes. Um, so the uh, husband, wife, or any combination thereof with one, two, three, eight kids doesn't matter. We're going to go out and play and, and uh, we'll get everybody around the course. We'll be there to help with some instruction and or just some advice and encouraging people along the way. It's a lot of fun. We, we walk through the course and it kind of exposes everybody to what a real golf course is, especially for people that have only been on the driving range. It's their introduction to playing actual golf instead of just hitting balls. We do that with some of our other lesson programs, and we always end up at the par three course and, and let people get out and 
experience it uh, with our teed up Yuma program for kids. Ninety-nine percent of the kids who graduate from the program that day that they're on the par three course is the only time they've actually been on a golf course, and they wow. have an absolute blast. And we try to do, replicate the same thing with the the family golf play the par three course, and that's February tenth. Okay, so everyone, February 10th, uh, mark your calendars for that. And then also, um, you have, you know, speaking of youth, a junior golf clinic, and uh, that's December 17th through 19th, right? That's right. It's in the afternoon uh, when people are off for the holiday break from school. It's from four to five each day. And I should mention, with all of these clinics in the junior clinic, nobody needs clubs. We have clubs for everybody. If you have your own clubs, that's great. You can bring those, but and we don't want anybody to be turned away because they don't have clubs. So we provide all the equipment that anyone would need. And in that junior clinic, we go through the fundamentals of the full swing, the short game, putting, and we also go over rules. This is not necessarily for somebody who's never played golf, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. it could be a, a, a strict beginner coming to that. But most of the kids that will come to that program, and it's from anybody 8 to 17 years old, have at least had some introduction to golf. Right on. Okay. And then foot golf. This is the other thing. So you may have golf at the Desert Hills golf course, but you also have foot golf. So tell us about that because this does sound more like I could be more successful possibly with foot golf. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I played soccer. Does that help? <laughs> that that helps in, in measurably. Yeah. At the par three course, we also have a nine hole foot golf course and foot golf combines golf and soccer together you use a soccer ball to tee off on the regular teeing ground of the golf course and you're playing to a separate hole that has a 21 inch diameter cup in it there's a separate flag in there too and so you kick the ball down the fairway towards that rather large hole and you just like regular golf you try to get it in as few shots or few kicks as possible and we have people that go out there and run the course and they use it as a conditioning drill and they're they're dribbling and kicking the soccer ball the whole way and it i've i've watched people that are really skilled soccer players do it mm -hmm. and they finish nine holes and they say well that was really fun can we do it again and they'll say can you do it again you can do it all day if you want to <laughs> yeah yeah go Why have not? fun yeah so i'm thinking that you need to have a foot golf and beer event uh, I'm just you know, saying. That, that's a great <laughs> idea. We'll have to, we can figure that one out. I like, like that, that idea. I'm, I'll be in Yuma. <laughs> I'll be in Yuma. Just name the date. I'll be there. Uh, so this is fun. And so you do the clinics um, and then you have a tournament. So you start with the clinic is on December 30th and then the tournament January 5th. Are the people from the clinic doing the tournament? Usually, uh, well, we get a, a lot of skilled soccer players that come to play the foot golf tournament too. Oh, cool. Cool. This is fun. I like this idea. And I bet this opens the door also to youth. It does. There's, there's a, we cater to the um, local middle school and high school soccer coaches and try to get their teams out to, to one, see something differently in some different terrain, but also to do that conditioning drill we talked about. Now, does, does any of the girls come out and play? Do you have women soccer players? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right on, right on. Because I, they, you know, we kick butt. <laughs> I did when I was in high school. Let's put it that way. That was fun. It was, it was so much fun playing soccer and just, you know, getting out there. But that was that was a thing that I grew up in South Africa, and so that was a a big deal for the girls to do, um, or netball, which was like basketball, but you're not allowed to bounce the ball. It's oh. it's like soccer in the air. Yeah, that's what we used to play. The guys like would do. That rugby and soccer um but rug rugby for girls man <laughs> it's brutal Rugby's brutal <laughs> i'll, I'll yes, stick to the is. soccer and the foot golf and uh this sounds like so much fun out there and you know, speaking of girls and women you also have a women's city championship coming up too we do the city championship for women is going to be played january 12th and 13th at the 36 hole event we're going to play at 11 o'clock both those days and the winner of the championship fight will be our city championship mm -hmm. winner and the event is pre-flighted so it doesn't matter what level player you are you don't have to compete in the championship flight 
if you're not as skilled a player as some of those players, that's okay. You're going to be competing with people who are similarly skilled with you. And mm -hmm. so you can win your flight and have just as much. Satisfaction. That's the great thing about golf. You can be satisfied playing at your level as long as you're playing with other people of similar skill or you're using the handicap system. So we want everyone to, all the ladies to come out and, and, and feel like they're going to be competitive because we're going to put you in a situation where you're competing against other players of your same caliber. Hmm. I like this. I like this. Now, Super Bowl tournament. Okay, so now <laughs> this is February 3rd. What's happening then? It's a, a tournament just because it's Super Bowl season? Yes, you know, the game starts earlier in Arizona. It starts about 3 o'clock, so we're going to play that morning so people can get to their Super Bowl parties. But what we do in this, it, it's a special scramble tournament. It's called a step aside. So you have a four-player team, and all four players hit a tee shot, and then you select the best position from which to play the next shot and mm -hmm. whoever's is selected sits out that shot so now oh. you only have three balls in play and the key there is you got a lot of strategy because you may have hit the best drive but we really want you to hit the second shot so we'll take the next best drive so that you don't have to sit out that shot oh so, and you have to do that you have to do that all the way around the course so what what we found over the years with this format is that the first time people play it they really get befuddled by it and have to about takes them about nine holes to figure out what they're doing. And then the people that have played it before. And they move on. They get they it. Ten, they tend to uh, play better that first time around because they, they have the strategy down pat. So this is something that people should be doing every year just to keep progressing with this. That's right. All right. And then you're ready for Super Bowl, and you, you know, so you're ready, <laughs> you're ready yeah. for it. Yeah, I mean cause... that's a great day. You play golf in the morning, then you go watch the Super Bowl. I mean that's a man's dream. And I know. I'm like everyone's going to take a well. nap. Somebody needs a nap at the end of all of this. <laughs> but I yeah, like they're... this because I know that people they're they're saying that um, most of the hospital visits from Super Bowl are not the athletes. It's people jumping up off their chairs and haven't you know moved around. So if you've done this in the morning, you're you're ready to jump off the chair when your team scores. I think that's an important point that you're properly stretched out for having played golf that morning. <laughs> that's important for Super Bowl. And you've done your exercise, so you're allowed extra beer and chips and nachos and all the goodies that go with it, you know? That, that sounds good to me. It sounds all prepared. Oh, I saw an event on your website, and I have no idea what this is about. What is a ping demo day? This is November 23rd. What, what do you, what's a ping? Ping is a a golf club manufacturer they produce extremely oh. excellent golf clubs everything from drivers to putters and wedges to iron sets and what we do at a demo day is we pull out all of their newest and greatest technology and we do a fitting day we put everybody on a swing launch monitor that will measure swing speed spin rate trajectory, all the variables that go into someone's swing. And by putting you on that monitor, we can determine what kind of equipment you're going to be in. Imagine you wear a size six shoe and I've got you wearing size four. Mm. That's not that's not going to work very well. Well, a lot of people are not using the right equipment. It's miss, It's missing either the correct weight or the correct length or the shaft flex. There's a ton of variables that go into it. By going to a demo day and being uh, professionally fitted by one of our staff members, they'll get you dialed in and, and make sure you have the right equipment. Uh, you can order uh, clubs that day if you choose to, or you can do it a couple weeks later, uh, and they'll be in in your hands before Christmas. Oh, nice. And this is all through your golf pro shop, right? Correct. Okay. And this and this is a pro shop that you know people can go in all the time and, um, you know, get all their gear. I did want to touch on this because we were talking about, you know, um, it being a championship course, um, that you've had a lot of professional events um, held at, at Desert Hills and actually quite a few PGA uh, Tour stars as well over the years. Over the years, it, it's been a while since we've hosted one of those, but yes, mm -hmm. the, it, it is. Desert Hills has been the site of what's now the web.com tour. Um, and then it was 
the Nike tour or the Hogan tour. Um, and mm. we're working on bringing another similar event next year uh, that would be, I can't really talk too much about it now because it's still under negotiation, but we are okay. looking to bring professional golf back to Desert Hills. Oh, excellent, excellent. And so anybody from out of the area coming through, you know, I love that you're so uh, close to Yuma Civic Center. So if the, if someone is putting on a major conference or an expo, they could tie in with Desert Hills, right, and, and add a tournament to um, their list of what they're doing when they come out to Yuma? That's exactly right. We We partner with the staff at – Pacific Center all the time to uh, provide some added value and some added entertainment and added things for do people that are at conferences or at meetings um, that they can enhance their experience while they're in Yuma, putting in a, a round of golf either before the conference begins or on the way out of town. Or sometimes you need it right in the middle. <laughs> like, let me out. Some, sometimes you need to, yeah, just uh, I'm blowing off this session, so I'm going to go play golf. I know. That's it. Right over there. And then I'm going to go have a cocktail at, at the patio. <laughs> we got, we've got to love the patio, too. It sounds like a full day. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us back here on Big Ben Radio, Drew. Everyone, again, the website is cityofyumagolf.com. You can also keep up with Yuma events if you go to yumaaz.gov. And we also keep a list of all the events on our site, nationalparktraveling.com. Uh, and I also want to thank our sponsor for today's segment, which is the historic Coronado Motor Hotel in Yuma, Arizona. It's in the downtown district, over 120 clean rooms, comfortable rooms. We know all about it. That's our Love Your Park to our headquarters. Nancy and I stay there all the time. And this year they're celebrating 80 years of being in business. That's amazing. So congratulations to everyone at the Peaches and the Coronado Motor Hotel. Go to their website, coronadomotorhotel.com. And don't forget, keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thanks so much for joining us, Drew. Thank you, Lisa. Have a good day. You too. Take care.